Hi, my name is Entername, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to two of the best platforms for outsourcing your content online that are both great for growing your business. Okay, sorry, I can't do this with a straight face. Up until now, this entire video script has been written by an AI content generator. The company behind this tool is Jarvis.ai. They used to be known as Conversion.ai, but they've recently rebranded to Jarvis to represent the more expansive nature of the tool. Let me just say from the outset that you can't just put in a keyword and get out a very high quality article from the AI. We're not there yet. In fact, we're probably a few years or even a decade or so away from that. But if you don't care about producing the most high quality content and quantity is your game, then you better pay attention now because the game has changed. Jarvis uses the GPT-3 algorithm to produce content based on the instructions that you give it, what it can find that other people have written online, and some nifty rewriting. It can produce content for all sorts of occasions, such as video scripts, as you saw at the start of this video, entire blog posts, blog post outlines, it can write your ad copy, your email subject lines, and many, many, many more things. And as you saw by the intro, it's not perfect. But after using it for a while, I can tell you it's definitely worth playing around with if you create content. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, how good is it? Is it as good as my best writer? Is it as good as your worst writer? Well, I devised an experiment so we can find that out. First, I'm gonna create three full-length articles using Jarvis. Then I'm gonna order the exact same three articles from Text Broker. And we're gonna compare them and see who wins. Now, obviously I'm not expecting Pulitzer Prize winning work from Jarvis or indeed from Text Broker. But this experiment should give you an idea of what you can do with AI content. So, quick question for you, who do you think is gonna win? Humans or AI? Pause this video right now and post a comment down below with your guess and let's see if you're right. I came up with three different keywords which represent the different styles of content you can have. We've got a versus article, we've got an info article, and we've got a review. Then I went to Jarvis.ai and used it to create a blog post outline. I think what's going on behind the scenes here is it's looking at other articles about your topic and it's trying to pull out some of the subheadings and the structure from those. Now this did work some of the time, but other times it required some more human oversight. And sometimes this just didn't work at all, so I had to do it manually by looking at who else was ranking in Google and looking at some of their subheadings to get some ideas for a structure for. Next, I used a long form assistant in Jarvis to start writing my article. You write a short description of the article you wanna create, and Jarvis will automatically come up with a title for you. Again, you need a human to actually check that these are good, but I was really impressed with the suggestions it was coming up with. If I was writing an article, I'd be happy to use this as a first port of call when coming up with a title idea. Now, if you've been following Authority Hacker for any length of time, you'll know that I'm very picky when it comes to intros for articles. Now, Jarvis doesn't do quite as good a job as I would like for an intro, but it does do, I would say, an acceptable intro. That's something, uh, an average quality writer would create the say what you're gonna say type approach. I did notice a few weird things being pulled in here. For example, when it says keyword web hosting on the first option, that's probably where the AI has been rewriting another article and has pulled this in from the code. No problem though, we have several options here, so I chose the one I liked the best and formatted it to make it just a little bit more readable. Once that's out of the way, it's time to start creating the content. Jarvis's long form editor is actually pretty clever. It creates content based on what it sees before it in the article. Here I'm gonna enter my first subheading using the hashtags to let it know that it's a heading. Then I click the compose button and it just starts writing. It's pretty cool to actually see it in action. And the results are okay. It doesn't have the same critical sense that a good writer would have, but it's gonna be interesting to compare it to some not so good writers. Sometimes you'll find that the compose button is actually grayed out. Here you'll need to start writing something to give it a bit of a kickstart. Write a new heading or start writing a sentence and then let it take over. Now for those of you creating quality content, this is where it can be really, really helpful. Jarvis can help you cure writer's block. Now admittedly, sometimes it does go a bit too far and just spurts out nonsense. So it definitely needs human oversight to get good content out of it. 
Though I would argue that you could say the same for any human writer as well. It took me about 12 minutes to create my first article, and this was never having used the tool before. With some practice, you could probably start outputting an article every few minutes. And if you upgrade to their top tier boss mode, this can go even faster. I repeated the process two more times to create three articles in total. One versus article, one info article, and one single product review. Then I ordered the same articles from TextBroker. They have different tiers of quality over at TextBroker. So to give Jarvis a chance, I went with two star, which is the lowest quality that TextBroker offers. I took the same title, description, and outline that I used in Jarvis, and I put that into TextBroker for my order. Each article ended up costing around $10. I got everything back in a couple of days. I renamed and reformatted the content slightly, so it wasn't obvious which had come from TextBroker and which had come from Jarvis. But I didn't change any of the text when I did this. Then I sent them to my definitely human business partner and asked him to tell me which one he thought was best. I'll link each article in the YouTube description so you can go and check them out in full if you'd like. But for now, over to Gail. All right, so Mark has given me all the articles here in uh, Google Drive, and I'm going to attempt to, um, I think I'm going to attempt to figure out which one I like the most, but also try to guess which one is AI. So let's just go ahead and open the first document and see what happens. I'm just gonna read the intro to try and decide uh, if this makes sense, if this is not like gibberish or something. It kind of goes back and forth. I wish they said everything about SiteGround in one place and everything about DreamHost in one place. And basically we have, Core features, and you can see they break it down like Bluehost, Dreamhost, Tigran. I like that. You can see that they say, like, oh, Bluehost has okay performance. I don't necessarily agree, but whatever. Um, but what I like is that they refer to what they wrote before, like, Dreamhost is also great. So it refers to the previous paragraph, which I'm not sure AI would do. So I'm gonna guess that this one is written by humans, uh, but I'm not sure. But overall, I like this. Uh, a recommendation, and then there's a clear recommendation at the end. Uh, <laughs> recommendation for Bluehost. This is not my recommendation, guys. Uh, I prefer other hostings than Bluehost. Let's check the other one. Cost-efficient web host to run the behind the scene activity for, okay. <laughs> that is like, get the fuck out for me, by the way. Like if someone just writes something like this, I'm like, because what, it's, what it is, is this is a rewrite for backend. Um, behind the scenes, you don't say that for uh, uh, um, hosting, but you put to run the back end of your website. And what happened here is essentially, I believe the AI kind of like spun this and just took a synonym that doesn't make sense at all. So I'm saying this was AI already, I can tell. This is worse. I prefer the other one. I believe this is AI. You know, if I was writing this as a human, I'd be like, uh, like everyone else, they offer a SSL certificate uh, so that I wouldn't repeat exactly free SSL certificate everywhere. So yeah, this is AI to me, for sure. And this is a bit worse. It doesn't cross refer to previous statements made, etc. By the way, it's it's there's a typo. So I don't know if the AI made a typo or if this is actually the, <laughs> if this is actually a human. Now that there's a typo for like the WP beginner, I'm 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 re-questioning my choice. But if this is human based, then I'm sorry, but AI is better than human. Yeah, <laughs> this is more difficult than I thought. Uh, the typo really throws me off. And the fact that it went, I don't believe an AI would just go and recommend a third party, like another thing that is outside the scope of the article. I think the AI would stick to it. If that's the case, I like 1A better. I think 1A is a better article, even though I disagree with the recommendation. Uh, I would, if I had to post one on my site, like you put a gun on my head and I have to post one on my site, I would put 1A actually. Okay, so Gail says that he thinks 1A was better. Well. I can tell you that 1A was in fact written by AI. AI leads humanity one to zero. Let's see how humanity fares in the second round. Okay, Google Core Web Vitals, that is a technical topic, so it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, the current approach to make the internet better is the Core Web Vitals. I really hope this is AI. If this is the human one, uh, you have no hope against AI. I'm so sorry. Uh, this is a really bad intro. The other one, it's simple, I don't necessarily agree with everything, but I like this one a lot better. Um, let's just pick like something that is a bit technical here. CRX reflects how difficult navigating your website is and Google will see this as an indication that you are not giving the user what they want 
or you are too slow operating, completely wrong. CLS is just like the way the page moves around as it's loading. You should make sure that there's le less than three links per line. It's very important for CLS guys, three links per line. <laughs> Otherwise, if someone clicks on one link, they'll end up having no idea to which other links exist elsewhere on the site <laughs> because the attention was already diverted away by clicking through. Um, <laughs> I think I want to print this and put this in the frame. This is so amazing. So as this shows you, I hope this is AI. I really hope this is AI. It's completely wrong. The other article, uh, it's like, it's not very detailed, but it's, it's, it's actually way closer to what CLS is. This is just bullshit. Um, so to me, and I didn't read the rest of the article. From what I'm seeing here, I'm going to say to be is the better article even though um, even though it's not very well written. It's not, uh, it's not, there's no way I would post this on a toy hacker. It's way too vague, etc. right? But from the little sample that we've just had, this is something that doesn't lie at least. This is just complete bullshit, not true. Never ever trust this person or software to put anything technical on your website, pretty much. So Gail said 2B was the better article. Well, I can reveal that 2B was in fact written by humans. So the score is tied at one all. I noticed when I was making the Core Web Vitals article in Jarvis that it got some of the facts just completely wrong. This was clearly quite a technical concept. And I think the AI struggled there. So let's go to the final article to see who takes the championship home. So now this is a product review, so it's going to be interesting. So let's read again the intro and maybe like a more factual base part. So but you will have to act on it to be active. But you will have to act on it to be active. To avoid such a case, let's introduce you to Grum. I mean, this is pretty shit content. Uh, the way the, the sentences are put together is pretty terrible. This looks like a just a right? but it could be human, to be honest. Are you tired of trying to keep up with all your social media? Do you wish there was a way to show your posts in advance? This is a much better intro, like way better. Um, so I hope this is a human, but I'm, I'm not sure. This looks like a, a a set formula kind of for intro, but it's a good one. Like kind of like the question at the beginning, etc. I think this is way better than this. This is freaking terrible. This is, you know, a bit salesy, but acceptable. Basically, I don't need to go further. Um, this is a little bit less, I wish it was, I like the bullet point format, um, but this is way nicer to read. This is way nicer content already, I can tell. And if I check the verdict, yes, this is the better content. 3B is way better than 3A. Uh, so I would pick that and I uh, hope that's the human, but I'm not too sure because this looks like a set formula. So Gail's final guess was 3B. And remember, the winner of this one takes home the championship. So the winner of round three and undisputed champion is Artificial intelligence. Can you believe that? Now, to me, this is a little bit surprising. I didn't expect AI to do so well. Don't get me wrong, never in a million years would I use text broker two-star content on one of my websites. So I'm not about to replace our whole writing team with, with AI, not just yet. However, this does mark a turning point in the development of AI content. I've even seen some sites going all in on AI content. One such site I saw produced over half a million articles using AI and now gets over a million monthly visitors to the site. And worst of all, it's only DR3. Don't worry, I'm making a separate video on that, which I'll be releasing on this channel shortly. So if you're one of the 50% of people watching this video who are not yet subscribed, then please do click on that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss that next video. It's gonna be coming out real soon. And spoiler alert, Google's probably going to have to do something about this. For those of you focused on quality content, however, and before you write off Jarvis or any of the other AIs as just a more advanced article spinner, you should pay attention. Because I wanna show you a few areas that AI really excels in and can help you and your writing team. First, it can help you get unstuck. When you have an idea, but don't know how to phrase it, don't know how to get it down. Simply dump your thoughts into the sentence expander and it can do the rest. If you're creating any kind of sales copy, the PASS framework can help you to construct more effective sales arguments. Just enter the product name and describe what the product does. You can use this in your sales copy or you can use this when formulating an angle for your product review. 
And lastly, if you're doing any kind of social media content, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, things like that, Jarvis is amazing. Just type in what you want to say and it will translate it into more hypey social media lingo. So overall, Jarvis.ai is not about to replace all human writers just yet. However, it has got its first foot on the ladder and it's replaced probably some of the worst writers out there, which is impressive in its own right. The way I see Jarvis being used is not as a replacement for your writers, but as a way to augment them, to get them creating more words per hour and get those articles out faster. Learn to use it properly and you and your team will have a serious advantage over other writing teams. Jarvis has three packages available at $29, $109, and $119 per month. The $29 package will give you 20,000 words of AI content. Plus, if you sign up using the link in the description below, that's our affiliate link, then you get an extra 10,000 words per month on that package. This is great if you just wanna test it out, experiment with a few blog posts here and there, or you're using it for social media content, sales copy, things like that. If you want to write lots of longer form blog posts, then you'll probably want the unlimited plan at $109 per month. And if you plan to scale the shit out of AI content, then go for boss mode at $119. The main difference there is you don't get that downtime where you have to start writing a sentence to get it going again. You can just keep pressing the button and just keep going. So I have a question for you. Do you plan on using AI content on any of your sites? Let me know in the comments. I read them all and I'll respond to everyone who leaves a comment within the next week. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.